Well, hello and welcome back. Lecture 8-2, Filter Design, Butterworth Filters. The objectives for today's lecture is to describe the process for filter design, to describe the characteristics of Butterworth and Chebyshev filters, and to design Butterworth filters to meet design specifications. Filter specifications are normally written in terms of loss versus frequency, as shown by the following equation, because there is typically more loss than gain. So the loss in decibels would be 10 log base 10 of 1 over the magnitude of h of j omega squared, which equals negative 10 log base 10, the magnitude of h of j omega squared, or negative 20 log base 10, the magnitude of h of j omega. For a low pass filter, the filter specifications would look like the following. The vertical axis would be labeled the magnitude of L of omega in decibels. And the horizontal axis is omega. And then here, we'd have our ripple in the pass band. Here's our transition. And here's our ripple in the stop band. And then we use this to differentiate between the two. And we label this area the minimum stop band loss. And here, we label this area the maximum passband ripple. And then this area in between, just like before, is called the transition band. Here we have omega P, which is the passband edge. And here we have omega S, which is the stop band edge. The goal of filter design is to find a frequency response curve that satisfies the given specifications and is also realizable using physical components. One class of realizable filters has a frequency response whose magnitude is of the form. The magnitude of h of j omega squared is equal to 1 over 1 plus epsilon squared gamma squared of omega, where gamma over omega is a rational function in omega. Some useful filters are designed with gamma of omega as a polynomial in omega. The polynomial is usually even or odd, and a common approach is to try to make gamma of omega approximately zero for the magnitude of omega less than the omega p passband edge and hope for the best for when omega is greater than omega s the stop band edge hope for the best means you hope that it's actually going to meet the design specifications to avoid the trivial solution when gamma of omega is equal to zero which produces no stop band we require that the magnitude of sigma of omega p equals the magnitude of sigma of negative omega p and that must equal one at the passband edge, we would have the magnitude of h of omega p squared is equal to 1 over 1 plus epsilon squared, where epsilon can be adjusted to meet the maximum passband ripple specification. And the L of omega p, or the loss, would be 10 log base 10 of 1 plus epsilon squared. And that would be the loss in decibels. The parameter epsilon can be adjusted to meet the maximum passband ripple specification, as stated before, and different filter design results from different ways of achieving sig gamma of omega approximately zero for the magnitude of omega less than omega p. Butterworth filters. The low pass Butterworth filter is designed to be maximally flat for frequencies in the pass band or where omega is less than omega p. Maximally flat means that the filter's variation with frequency in the pass band is monotonic and approaches a zero derivative as the frequency approaches zero. For the maximally flat approach, if gamma of omega is equal to omega over omega p to the n, we get that the magnitude of h of omega, which is as flat as possible for omega near zero, and the resulting filter is called a Butterworth filter that has the following equation. 
the magnitude of h of j omega squared is equal to one over one plus epsilon squared omega over omega p raised to the two n. Or in terms of loss, L of omega is 10 log base 10, one plus epsilon squared, omega over omega p raised to the two n. So here we're gonna have a sketch of the loss in decibels for a Butterworth filter. So our vertical axis is the magnitude of L of omega in decibels. Our horizontal axis is omega. It's maximally flat, so there will be no ripples. So what you will see is the curve will do something like this. Where this is the pass band edge and the stop band edge. However, if you have a higher order of n, it's going to curve more steeply like this. So this would be an example of a higher n and this one would be a lower n. So the transition is steeper for the higher order of n. So here we have some examples of transfer functions for our Butterworth filters, where the filters are in the form h of s is equal to one over the denominator of s. So notice that if you have n is equal to one, it's just s over omega p plus one. But if it's a second order, it's a second order polynomial, s over omega p squared plus 1.414 s over omega p plus one. Or if it's a third order Butterworth filter, it has a third order polynomial, s over omega p to the third power plus two times s over omega p squared plus two times s over omega p plus one and so on. The poles of the low pass filter for a Butterworth filter lie on a semicircle of, ra of radius omega p. In the open left half plane as shown in the following figure. Remember all of the poles must be in the open left half plane in order for the filter to be stable. The number of poles n and the angular spacing between them is always pi over n. If n is odd, there is a pole on the negative real axis and all the other poles occur in complex conjugate pairs. If n is even, all the poles occur in complex conjugate pairs. So looking at our pole zero plots, here we have n is equal to one. For n is equal to one, and actually for all of these transfer functions, there's no zeros. But when n is equal to one, there's one pole at negative omega p. And over here we have n is equal to two. When n is equal to two, we have two poles. One is at omega p, e to the j, three pi over four, and the other one is at omega p, e to the j, five pi over four. And notice these are complex conjugates of each other. Then here, when n is equal to three, we have three poles. One will be on the negative real axis, that's negative omega p. The other two will be complex conjugate pairs. One is at omega p, e to the j, two pi over three. And the other one is at omega p, e to the j, four pi over three. And then for n is equal to four, there's not one on the negative real axis, but they are equally spaced. There's two sets of complex conjugate pairs. So there are four poles. One is at omega p, e to the j, seven pi over eight. Omega p, e to the j, nine pi over eight. And then the other pair is at omega p, e to the j, five pi over eight, and omega p, e to the j, 11 pi over eight. The Butterworth filter will have a passive or active implementation similar to the following two figures. The order of the filter is also the number of poles, as we've seen before, and also the number of reactive elements in the circuit. Remember, reactive elements are inductors and capacitors. As the order of the Butterworth filter increases, the filter's magnitude frequency response approaches that of an ideal low-pass filter. 
The figures on the next page show L of omega versus omega for a fifth order Butterworth filter with omega P equal one radian per second and a 3 dB pass band ripple. Notice how flat L of omega is, especially at low values of omega. So here we have a fifth order Butterworth filter that has five reactive elements and it's actually a passive filter. And you can tell it's a low pass filter because as the frequency approaches zero, the capacitor would look like an open circuit and the inductors would look like a short circuit. So the gain of this filter at zero would be R over two R or one half. Over here, we have an active, this one's passive. Over here, we have an active Butterworth filter. We know it's active because it has an op amp and it's second order because it has two capacitors. So once again, you can see that at low frequencies, the capacitor behaves like an open circuit and this capacitor also behaves like an open circuit. So what you would have is a gain H of J zero of one. Then as the frequency increases, the capacitor looks like a short circuit, which means the positive terminal would get shorted to ground, the negative would get shorted to ground. So at high frequencies, this one goes to zero. Similarly over here, the capacitor shorts out the resistor as the frequency goes to infinity. So at high frequencies, this one would also be zero. So here we have an example of the loss in decibels for a fifth order Butterworth filter, where here we have the maximum pass band ripple and here we have the minimum stop band ripple. I'm also going to show you some examples based upon plots of the gain for Butterworth filters next. Here's a plot in decibels of the gain for several different Butterworth filters, where n is equal to one from, from one, n equals equal to one to six. So n is equal to one, notice has the slowest transition band. And down here, this one represents n is equal to six, which is steeper. So you would select the n that best meets your design specifications. And notice that all of them have a maximally flat pass band. Example. Suppose we required omega P to equal two pi 1000 radians per second and omega S to equal two pi 2000 radians per second with a three decibel maximum pass band ripple and a four decibel minimum stop band loss. Design a Butterworth filter to meet the required specifications. So first I'm going to make a sketch of the loss in decibels. So here we have the vertical axis, the horizontal axis omega. And here would represent my maximum pass band ripple. So that's going to be three decibels. Here we're going to have omega P, which is two pi 1000. Remember these are in radians per second. Here, we're going to have omega S, which is two pi 2000 radians per second. And then here, this is going to represent my maximum stop band, my minimum stop band loss. So this is going to be 40 decibels. So first we're going to calculate the loss at the stop at the pass band. So we're going to have L of J omega P is equal to 10 log base 10 one plus epsilon squared, and that has to equal three decibels. So log base 10 of one plus epsilon squared is equal to 0 0.3. One plus epsilon squared is equal to 10 raised to the 0 0.3. Epsilon squared is equal to 10 to the 0 0.3 minus one. And finally, Epsilon squared is equal to 0 0.995, which is approximately one. L of J omega S, the stop band loss, is equal to 10 log base 10 of one plus omega S over omega P. 
raised to the 2n, and that has to equal 40 decibels. So we call T equal to omega S over omega P, the transition ratio of the filter, transition ratio, which in this case, T is going to be equal to 2 pi 2,000 divided by 2 pi 1,000, which equals 2. So L of J omega S is equal to 10 log base 10 of 1 plus 2 to the 2N, and that has to equal 40. So log base 10 of 1 plus 2 to the 2N is equal to 4. 1 plus 2 to the 2N is equal to 10 raised to the fourth power. 2 to the 2N is equal to 10 to the fourth minus 1. You can take the log of both sides and we will have 2N times the log base 10 of 2 equals the log base 10 of 10 to the fourth minus 1. And finally, solving for n, n is equal to 6.64. So you need to select the order of the filter that will be the closest to satisfying this. So you need to round up to the nearest integer, which means you want to select n is equal to 7. And finally, we will draw the magnitude of the frequency response squared which is going to be one over one plus omega over omega p, which is two pi 1000 raised to the two n. So in this case, that would be 14. You could also specify this filter in terms of the loss as L of j omega magnitude 10 log base 10 of one plus the quantity omega over 2 pi 1,000 raised to the 14. And this concludes lecture 8-2 on filter design for Butterworth filter.